Hello everyone and welcome to your second biopsychology lesson which is all about, all about neurons and synaptic transmission. So neurons are the basic building blocks of the nervous system. Okay? They are nerve cells that process and transmit messages. You've got over a hundred billion neurons in the human nervous system and over 80% of those are in the brain. Now, as I said before, they transmit messages, um, and they do that through electrical and chemical transmission. We'll come on to what that means in a little while. Um, and they are the primary means of communication within your nervous system. Okay. Now, there are three main types of neuron. You've got your relay neuron, You've got the sensory neuron, and you've got a motor neuron. Okay, so we're going to start with the sensory neuron. Um, the sensory neuron carry, carries messages from your peripheral nervous system to the central nervous system. So if you think back to last lesson, your peripheral nervous system was all to do with fight or flight, but it was also to do with getting information from sensory receptors and also allowing muscles and other effectors to move and to um, and to act on reflexes etc you've then got your relay neuron your relay neuron connects sensory receptors uh, sorry sensory neurons to motor neurons or also to other relay neurons but they're connecting neurons and then finally you've got your motor neurons and your motor neurons connect your central nervous system to effectors um, and by effectors we mean things like muscles and glands the motor neurons are the thing that bring about the response to the stimulus um, by the time the impulse actually gets there. Okay. So you can pause it now if you want and take down a few of the basic notes. Okay, I've just got a little bit of an animation for you so you can see um, how things would move from a stimulus all the way to a response and how the different neurons are actually involved. So you've got a stimulus, let's say the stimulus is you uh, touch something hot. Um, so pain receptors are then going to be stimulated. That's going to be picked up by a sensory neuron because sensory neurons pick up information from your senses. That's going to get passed on to a relay neuron which is then going to get passed on to a motor neuron. Remember, motor neurons are connected to muscles, glands, and other effectors. Um, so there are our effectors. And then um, the final stage is then the response of pulling back your hand very, very quickly to avoid any long-lasting damage. So, if we're going to talk about um, a neuron, you're going to need to know how a neuron is structured. And um, these are the these are the main points that you need to know. So, all of those all of those key words that are on the board, you will need to know what they are. You will need to know what they do. So, I'm now going to tell you a little bit about that. So, neurons in general vary in size. They can be less than a millimeter long, um, but they can also be up to a meter long as well. But they all share the same structure. You've got a cell body which contains a nucleus, um, which essentially has the genetic material of that cell in it. Um, there are branch-like structures that protrude from the cell body. They're called dendrites, and they carry impulses from neighboring neurons towards the cell body. You've got a long axon, 
which carries an impulse away from the cell body and down the length of the neuron okay, towards the axon terminals. The axon is covered in a fatty layer which is known as the myelin sheath and that protects the axon and it speeds up the electrical transmission of the impulse. Now if the myelin sheath was continuous it would actually have the reverse effect and it would slow down the electrical impulse. So what has happened is the myelin sheath actually has little gaps in it. It's segmented um, and those gaps are called the nodes of Ranvier. The nodes of Ranvier actually speed up the transmission of the, of the electrical impulse by forcing the impulse to jump across the gaps down the axon. So you imagine the impulse actually jumps from node to node rather than, um, rather than flowing continuously down the axon. And then finally, at the end of the axon, you've got what's known as the terminal buttons. The terminal buttons um, communicate with the next neuron in the chain across a gap which is known as the synapse. We'll come to the synapse in a little while. All you need to know for now is that the synapse is what separates one neuron from another neuron. Okay, if you need to rewind the video and actually write down some of that stuff that I just said about the neuron and how it's structured, then now is your chance to do so. Okay, I mentioned earlier that neurons actually communicate via electric transmission, but also chemical transmission. So what we mean by electric transmission is that usually neurons are in a resting state which mean that which means that it's negatively charged okay when when a neuron is actually activated by a stimulus the inside of it becomes very positively charged for a split second which causes what's known as an action potential it's also what's known as the neuron is firing okay when that action potential occurs or when the neuron fires an electrical impulse is created which then travels down the axon towards the end of the neuron. When it gets to the end of the neuron, when it gets to the terminal buttons, it has to cross the synapse. And this is where chemical transmission comes in. Okay? Because when the impulse reaches the end of the synapse, sorry, when the impulse reaches the end of the neuron, which is known as the presynaptic terminal, it triggers the release of neurotransmitters from tiny little sacs called synaptic vesicles. Those neurotransmitters then are released into the synapse and they diffuse across the synapse to the other side where they're picked up by postsynaptic receptor sites. At this stage, the neurotransmitter, which is a chemical, um, is then translated back or converted back into an electrical signal so that the impulse or the message can be then carried on along the next axon. Okay, just to clarify that because I realize there are a lot of a lot of complex things happening here. Um, just to clarify for you on this next slide. So you've got an electrical impulse which travels along the axon of a neuron. When it gets to the presynaptic neuron, chemical messengers called neurotransmitters are released from presynaptic vesicles and they're released 
into the synapse. These chemicals then diffuse across the synapse and bind to receptor sites on the postsynaptic neuron. Remember, the postsynaptic neuron is essentially the dendrite of the neighboring neuron. Okay. That chemical message is then converted back into an electrical impulse and the message then continues to the next neuron in the chain. Okay, and then finally, once the neurotransmitters have completed their task and the message has been passed on to the next neuron, they are then re reabsorbed into the presynaptic neuron so that they're ready for the next impulse that comes down, um, that comes down the axon. Okay, this is just another note-taking opportunity for you um, on neurotransmitters. So if you want to pause the video now, you can. Um, the basics are neurotransmitters are chemicals and they diffuse across the synapse. Um, they're responsible for converting an electrical impulse into a chemical message so that that electrical impulse can be passed along to the next neuron in the chain. Um, each neurotransmitter fits perfectly into a receptor site and each neurotransmitter has a specific function. For example, you've got a neurotransmitter known as acetylcholine which is found at each point where a motor neuron meets a muscle and when acetylcholine is released, it causes a muscle to contract. That is the specific function of that neurotransmitter. Okay. And then the final little bit on neurotransmitters is that they can have two effects on a neuron. Okay, you can have what's known as an excitation effect, but you can also have what's known as an inhibition effect. So some neurotransmitters result in neighboring neurons becoming more negatively charged. For example, you have a, a neurotransmitter called serotonin, which causes inhibition, so it causes a neighboring neuron to become very negatively charged, which means that it's less likely to fire. Okay. On the other hand, you have got certain neurotransmitters that make neighboring neurons more positively charged, which, which means that the neighboring neuron is more likely to fire, for example, adrenaline. Adrenaline it makes the neighboring neuron very, very positively charged because chances are you need that adrenaline for some kind of fight or flight response. Okay. Right, I hope it hasn't been too complex and too confusing. Good luck with it.